We are back. Remember the early days of television when television really started cooking? Uh, it were probably was not Tuesday night. Uh, they used to say that the movies had no business, the bars practically closed because Milton Burrow was on television, and uh, he truly was Mr. Television, and, and, and did a lot for everybody that followed in, in establishing television viewing habits. Uh, they call him Uncle Milty, but Mr. Tuesday Night is probably right. the thing I remember. He's a good friend. Would you welcome Mr. Milton Burrow? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Did and it you? is Tuesday night, yeah, come uh, to think of it. I was named Miss Tuesday, Mr. Tuesday Night, which is what my wife still calls me. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, I loved your monologue. I thought you were really terrific. Yes. The Karnak, but you're a good straight man. And uh, <laughs> you keep acting like that, you won't be invited to play at the impeachment ball. But... Um, <laughs> um, no, I was listening to your monologue. Absolutely hilarious, Johnny. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you and I have the same writers. Yours. <laughs> I haven't been on... <laughs> I wow. Haven't, I ha wow, wow. Two, three, four. I haven't been on uh, The Tonight Show yeah. so many years that uh, the last time I told a joke on this show, Skitch Henderson fell off the bandstand. That's was it that long ago? <laughs> yeah, that long ago. And I want to tell you something. You are absolutely terrific. You, you look like an obscene Bobby doll. <laughs> That I love. I, you were talking, I, I watched the show last night, and it was really terrific. It had Jack Bean. Be be Jack was on. Jack, Jack Benny. And uh, uh, you were saying that you didn't know where Ed McMahon was. That's right. Well, I know where he is. I know where he is. The, one of the Budweiser horses got sick, and he's filling in. That's the whole thing. <laughs> He'll hate you for and, that. Uh, no, he won't hate me for that. I love Ed, Ed McMahon when he's young. But this... Uh, Oh, by the way, um, you forgot one. You didn't forget. I was in your dressing room. I stole one of your Carmack, the Carnac oh, uh, yes. lines. <laughs> okay. Let me start off with this. <laughs> yes, quickly. Oh, Henry. Oh, Henry. I don't need you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> A little late. <laughs> what did Mrs. Kissing just say on her wedding night? <laughs> Give that. me that one. <laughs> now you give it to me. I want to tell you something, Johnny. I am very, very thrilled to be on your show. I really mean this, and I think, I have been on a long time, but I think that you are the most exceptional host and comedian that I've ever seen. I really mean that as a compliment. Well, thank you. Coming I'm, from you, that's... Uh, I mean it. That's... That, uh, that was written for me by the same person that writes the Nixon speeches. <laughs> And you're talking about Nixon and the uh, administration. You know, politics is a very strange business. One week you're on the cover of Time, the next week you're doing it. <laughs> but, no, you know, uh, I would say, and you will agree, that I think that President Nixon has done some great things. One thing, he, one great thing he did, he kept us out of Ireland. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> And uh, I'd you say... You know, the first time I really heard you do political stuff. I don't do political. Yeah. I leave that to you and Mark yeah. Saul. But I'd say if the Nixon was the captain of the Titanic, he would have told his passengers, don't worry, folks, we'll only stop him for ice. Well, enough of the political stuff. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad, I'm glad to be with you. We were, to, we were together. What are we going to talk night? about? We can talk about anything. Uh, maybe we'll do the thing we were talking about the other night because we both have an interest in magic and, and, and do magic as, as amateurs. How about we, that guy the other night? Bruce, uh, sir, what was his last name? Bruce. It was Cern just Bruce. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Bruce Cernan or something. I thought it was just Bruce. No. He was sensational. He was yeah, had on a Fruit of the Loom suit. <laughs> No, he was sensational. He was great. He was really good. I played with a lot of great magicians in vaudeville, too, at Leipzig. Who, yeah. you, you do magic. I do tricks, but not too well. Well, I, I'm, I'm an amateur. Oh, no, you're very good. You're very good. I picked up a few dollars in school and during the service, you know. Doing what? With cards oh. and things like that. It's not all I picked up during the service, I either, know. but we don't want to get into that. Uh, ring two, three, four. Are I going to do a commercial already, Mr. DeCord? Uh, then come we'll come back. We'll talk about your book that's coming out soon, because I know you've got a... Your well, it's not story. coming out right now. It'll be out in October. I want to talk about Raft and his book a little. You want to do your George Georgie Raft? Sure. We'll All do right. this and we'll come back and whatever. We'll continue after we pause for this brief word from our staff. Yeah. We 
just run us. We are that's for our band. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, hey, listen, you, uh, we should mention tomorrow night, uh, which is Wednesday, you open to the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas yeah, for another Las engagement. Vegas tomorrow night for three weeks. <laughs> What's the first year you played there? And you oh, go back I'd to the early back days. In, in the fifties, back nineteen fifty-two, I think. You weren't born yet. Nineteen. Uh, you weren't born yet, but I died there. Um, <laughs> back in nineteen fifty-two, and I got to tell you one story. Can I tell you? Sure. Um, I uh, had a heckler. Of course, we all have hecklers. This is a. Uh, uh, B uh, D R before Don Rickles, and uh, the hecklers. We we all know the stock answers, but I was doing a monologue like you were doing, uh, sort of falling on my face in several spots. <laughs> and uh, no, I was going pretty good, and I was right. I was rushing. I was going. I got to tell you, a funny thing happened. I was coming in the hotel, and a child walked over to me. He said, "You're number one on my hit parade," so he hit me. Whatever the lousy joke was, you know. <laughs> Sound like Youngman laying yes. off, don't I? <laughs> the king of the one-liners, Henny Youngman, because the dummy can't remember to. But um, <laughs> I was in the middle of this monologue, Johnny, and I was doing. I was a woman sitting down front. She, she must have, you know, tipped the captain pretty good, Captain Schmear. And uh, uh, they got a front row seat, and she was kind of drunk, drunk. She was loaded. And I was in the middle of the monologue, and I said a very funny thing. I was coming down the strip, and she was going, Mama Ziver, that was I was about to set up the joke, and I said, this I got to tell you, and I was about to get to the punchline, like, and the fella hit him, and he laid there. And I said, and the fella, and she went, mama, and then it's vain. <laughs> well, that's all right. And I threw a line at her, and I said, uh, there must be people out there right here breathing. Uh, didn't I meet you under a bed in Pittsburgh? Whatever the stale joke. <laughs> all right. You know, I never forget a face, but in your case, I'll make an exception. Whatever the stuff. <laughs> And every stock... Nothing helped. Well, no. Yeah. She just kept going... Never said and I'm waving to the captain. In the back of the room, I'm going... And he's going this to me. Because he must have got 100 from me. Huh? Well, I'm dying for 35 minutes. She is ruining my whole act. And every time I said... And, th and I was about to... Like the fella started before with you up there. <laughs> and... Uh, I said, and she went, <laughs> finally, I said, uh, and of course the boys in the band are dying because I'm dying. They're laughing, but I'm dying. And I can't get started. Finally, I threw a line, which has now become a stock line. And I said, oh, I remember you, lady. You heckled me here about 10 years ago. I never forget a dress. Oh. <laughs> That should, that should have done well, it. Well, wait a minute. That should have done it. It did it for a while. The audience laughed and applauded. And I thought I won. All of a sudden, I got down to silence, subsided, and <laughs> the guy next to us, now will you shut your damn mouth? And it started all over again. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm taking care of hecklers, you know. I was in, uh, in Vegas once, and uh, Henny Youngman, who used to be famous many years ago, he, um, he was appearing, of all places, to book Youngman uh, into a place called the Tropicana in the lounge. Well, Henny does a very good act, uh, his own. And uh, we went over to see him. He invited us over for a two o'clock show. And Joey Bishop was in town at the Sands. And we went over to see Youngman. Right. And we know all of Youngman's jokes. So do you. And, uh, and he's terrific. I say, Henny, he's terrific. He's got a, his own he's style. He's a funny man. And he's a funny guy. And uh, we went over. It was all show folks. And we, I sat on one side of the lounge. And Joey Bishop sat on the other. And Henny Youngman walked out. And he said, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I feel great. I was up this morning cracking my knuckles. And Joey Bishop yelled, you took a brisk walk to the bathroom and you're back in bed at 6.05? And he said, yep. He says, take my wife. And I said, please. <laughs> and he said, I, uh, I am. Um, and he's stalling and we're telling every punchline. <laughs> oh, that's cruel. He didn't tell one punchline. And he's on for 45 minutes. He says, you like the suit? I says, yeah, you can drip it, drape it, drop it, or droop it. He says, yeah, that's the joke. <laughs> that well, I'm on one side and Bishop's on the other. Well, 
It was a very funny evening. After the evening was over, <laughs> he comes out in the lobby, and everybody was saying, congratulations, Henny, you were terrific. You were terrific. And I said, Henny, you were great. He said, thank you. Can you come back again tomorrow night? <laughs> That's what he said. What would you have done? If you ever, did you ever consider? What? You, you've been in this business since you were a kid, um, a youngster. Did you ever consider anything else? You've never done any really anything else besides entertain, have you? You mean uh, in show business? No, I mean, no, in anything. I mean, this is what you've done since no, you were a child. I and No, I, I, I don't know. I started when I was five. Do you ever have a desire to do anything else except get up on a stage? Yeah. yeah. I don't know of anything else. Just yeah. give me uh, some hair tonic with a loud microphone and a good audience, and I'll be yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked George Burns once, uh, George, uh, when are you going to retire? And George said, retire? To what? Yeah. Now, that's the same with me. I live to work and I work to live. I don't know of anything else I'd rather do than... Get in front of an audience. Than get, get in front of an audience them. and hear the audience laugh. Uh, you know, and... Uh, oh, I like to show business. Just give me some makeup. Right. Give me an introduction, like Lucky Lucky or something, like Tommy plays. It's my song. You know, I wrote that. Really? Well, I wrote the, the lyrics. Yeah. The man, but that's the Tarantel with Buddy Arnold. Remember? <laughs> I didn't know you were Italian. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. <laughs> what? Uh, I didn't know what? Just a minute. I was going to this <laughs> What does it say? <laughs> I said, Milton, I didn't know you were Italian. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay. And, uh, I'll, t I'll tell him when he comes in. Yeah. I remember him. If he's a doc, I'd like to see what the nurse is dressed like. That's... <laughs> no, no, but there's nothing else that I would like yeah. to do. I really mean How about your son? You say Billy now? Uh, Billy? Yeah, does he want to be an entertainer? Well, uh, no. no. Billy doesn't want to be in show business. He's an adorable boy. He's 11. And uh, he knows me personally, by the way. And uh, no, he know, he wants to he wants the space, you know, he wants it with the airplanes yeah, and yeah. ships and everything. Of course, he's a little ham. He goes on with me once in a while, and I I don't think Ruth likes it. Uh, yeah. And neither do I to go on the stage. But he's a pretty good stand-up comedian. But uh, I don't th I think he'll grow out of it, Johnny. Yeah. I think. But you started even before that. Well, I started when I was about five years old, back uh, some years ago, and. Uh, well, you just celebrated the other day, will you? I, a, yeah, well, you, you, you were show in business. town. Yeah, the 60th anniversary. I started when I was about four and a half years old. And I got the book coming long. out about it. But it's not a theatrical book. It's not like, uh, completely like George. It's, a, not, it's not a biography. It's an right. autobiography. And uh, incidentally, Raph's book is very good. That's what I hear. He's made a career out of, you know, helping wounded men out of uh, cars. And... Um, <laughs> But uh, my book is nothing like that. This is a, sort of a deep, deep look in, into the trials and tribulations, not as an actor, as a child, all mm -hmm. the way up. But we'll go into that more when the book is ready to come out. I don't want to talk okay. about Did you just Didn't you just play in the movie uh, uh, Lepke? Yeah, I'm in the picture Lepke. And there's a strange story about that. I, uh, I play uh, Lepke's, well, I play Lepke's father-in-law. And it was a very, very good role. I hope that the producers are watching now because I heard it was a very, very strong part that I played. But unfortunately, I think that the picture was over, you know, over time and yeah. they had to make a lot of cuts. And I don't think I'm in the picture too much, but I think the picture's a damn good right. picture. I hear it's, uh, it's about Louis Bookhalter, whom I knew in my uh, younger days not too well. But, uh, and then... Uh, Oh, I'm doing non sequiturs here, but I was in the picture. Well, I've been in a lot of dramatic pictures. The, the, you asked me what else I'd like yeah. to do. Uh, I'd like to really do something. Uh, I've done a lot of straight dramatic roles, uh, Johnny, but something that's really I can get my teeth into. Yeah. Now, you've done a lot of straight roles, too. No, not I don't really have time to get off of this. I've played in a couple of things, but uh, that scares me. I get scared. I don't know why. Really? Yeah, I feel comfortable doing this, but I get scared if I have to play somebody else. It seems strange, but I do. You mean you can't be anybody else but Carson? I don't know. Oh, I think you can, I think. Never tried it. Well, it is a very difficult thing for a comedian. I'd say more difficult for a comic to be somebody else than a comedian. Yeah. And I consider you a comedian. Yeah. And there is a difference between a comic and a comedian. Right. Should, shall we finish tonight with our big thing that we talked about the other night? What? You, you know, you do magic and I do magic, and we both tried the ESP. And we were trying ESP the other night, you know. Yeah. And uh, do you want to try it? It might be sensational if it works. I, I, I don't guarantee oh, I have anything. To go out in the audience. You have to go into the audience. Yeah. We got a deck of cards here. Um, Sorry to wake you up. You. 
You need cards, or can they just... Uh, can no, they, they just, can whisper, but They I can read, just whisper. No, they can please. whisper a card, but I'd like the audience to see the card if you put the lights on. Oh, I see. Uh, there, there we, we are, are Jack. Cards. Oh, finally. Legitimate cards They're now. legitimate. Oh, my gosh, they must, people. must understand, we don't guarantee anything We don't here. guarantee this. We don't guarantee... Well, if it works, Because it's this sensation. has got a used car lot. Uh, now, if I had nails, I'd open it. Huh? This is not the trick, folks, opening the deck. Now, it's a brand you should have seen deck. us the other night with this magician. He was darn good. I'm going to shuffle the cards, and I'm going to go out front. I see a girl putting on her coat like we're going to be a, have the camera on her. Everybody starts primping immediately. Why you are you at it, lady? Here. Will you pull down your dress? I've seen... Uh, no, 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 no. I haven't seen Snuggies in years. Would you do that for me, please? Now, let's, uh, let's go over here. How do you do, sir? How are you? Doing, young Fine. Man. Why do you here make up another commandment? <laughs> uh, all right, now... John, can you... Oh. Yeah, I can hear you. Now, I'm going to have someone in the audience select a card. Right. And this is not Karnak uh, stuff. This is on the level. And he is a very fine magician. And the sooner you disappear and I take your place, it'll be better. Okay. Yes, you can do it. Would you select any... Would you stand up, please? Oh, my God. And all right, now, stand up. Oh, I got you see. Pick out any card. I'm not going to force one. Take any one. Right? Now, show it to the audience. Okay, Johnny. No, so wait a minute. Shh. Take it up. Will you take another card, please? Because I didn't think they saw it over there. Okay. Before I go any further, I want you to tell this lady the card that she has in her hand. I believe it's a black card at clubs. Would that be the, would you, okay. ten of clubs? Um, <laughs> excuse me, the jack, the jack, jack of clubs. Of clubs. Jack, of clubs. jack of clubs. Uh, fine, would you select, we'll do it once more, John. Okay. All right, I'm doing it from the John. Right. <laughs> Hold it. Go ahead and tell him the card. Uh, that's, it's a red card, diamonds. No. Nope. What? Uh, heart, hearts. I was right there. A red card, hearts. No, don't tell me anything else. Uh, that would be a face card also. That would be the king of hearts. Turn it over, sir. Show it to the audience. One more. Take one out. Anyone you want. Hold it. Unless I'm mistaken, I think he can tell you the card. That's hearts. Uh, we seem to get a lot of face cards tonight. That's the queen of hearts. Is that the queen of hearts, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> There you are, partner. There you are, partner. We, we, we pulled it off. Yeah, pretty good. That's pretty good. Before, uh, listen, I want to do one thing. You got, can I do one thing? Well, I just want to do one thing. Right. Very good friend of mine whom I admire and you do too is Jerry Lewis. Right. Right. And I think Jerry Lewis is a great comedian. And do you know that in, in France, Jerry Lewis is considered one yeah, of the, the, the greatest, if not the greatest comedy director. Yeah, they equate him with Chaplin. Yeah, they do equate him with Chaplin. But I was just thinking, and I don't think Jerry would take any offense to this. I was thinking, if Jerry was to direct a dramatic picture, right? This is what he'd look like. Now you are the person I'm directing. I don't know what's coming. You've I'm, never seen this. I'm the actor. I'm Jerry Lewis. Johnny. Mm -hmm. In this scene. You've got to look at me. Uh -huh. It's trust me. Yes, of course. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Quiet on the set, please. In this scene, it's very imperative. You're alone. You're still in love with this girl. Y you miss her. And don't forget, I don't want you to be too broad. Mm -hmm. And all the dialogue and the monologue that's coming from you has to come from the stream of consciousness and, from, and I don't want you to go overboard. Mm -hmm. Because if you go overboard, <laughs> 
It will not work. You understand me? And I want you to underplay it. Just do it with, 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 with your eyes. Because the inner feeling and the innards that you pour out in the scene, you must play it with a realism. And I believe it. That's all. Hey, I thank you for coming tomorrow night in Las Vegas. I'll be at the Sands for three weeks. I'll be at the Sands tomorrow night for three weeks with Diana Trask, one of the great Fine country and western singers. Fine singer. And Jerry Collins. Thank you very Give much. Give my love to you. Leo. I'm leaving. <laughs> Now a word from Toyota, small car specialist for 40 years.